Project 6A. A Natural Birth Simulation. You will need the following from the Apprentice Doctor Obstetrics Kit, the Birth Simulation Box, Dissection Scissors, an 18-inch red balloon, a simulation pelvic ring, perineal simulation skin, a tiny baby, lubricant, a pair of gloves, hemostat clamps, a cord clamp, a welcome baby card, a neonatal ID band, gauze, and an APGAR scorecard. Optional items required but not included in the Apprentice Doctor Obstetrics Kit are antiseptic solution if not available, use a soapy water mixture, other relevant PPE like a mask, apron, and eye protection, a tape measure, a kitchen scale, the make-do baby warmer from Project 5, and a stamp pad. As you prepare the birth simulation box, begin by enlisting an extra pair of hands for assistance. Start by removing the circular carton from the box and flapping open the opposite side. Next, cut the neck of the 18-inch balloon just below the lip and wrap the opening securely around the simulation pelvic ring. Generously apply lubrication gel to the tiny baby. Place both the tiny baby and its placenta inside the balloon, ensuring the placenta is positioned on the deeper side to prevent it from emerging first during the simulation. If needed, carefully adjust the tiny baby so its head is near the balloon's opening and it's facing downwards towards the table, mimicking the cephalic occiput anterior position. Insert the balloon with the tiny baby into the box's circular opening. Finally, secure the perineal simulation skin to the Velcro strips on either side of the opening to complete the setup. This project needs at least two participants, ideally three, an obstetrician, an assistant, and a labor and delivery or LND nurse. If only two are available, the obstetrician or the assistant can double as the LND nurse. The role of the assistant is to simulate the uterine movements. The obstetrician will deliver the baby, and the LND nurse will take over responsibility for the newborn post delivery. To start the birth simulation, all participants are required to perform hand hygiene and don gloves and other relevant PPE. The obstetrician will then use the gauze and the diluted antiseptic solution to clean the imitation perineum and then place the simulation drapes as shown. The assistant should place one hand inside the box and exert pressure on the balloon in order to move the baby down the birth canal. The progress of the delivery should be controlled by intentionally adjusting how much pressure is exerted. Carefully and slowly push the baby forward while simulating the movement and rhythm of contractions. After the baby is delivered, keep the placenta inside the balloon until after the obstetrician has clamped and cut the cord, then push the placenta out of the balloon to simulate the third stage of labor. Meanwhile, the obstetrician should gently support the perineal skin around the emerging baby's head to prevent tearing by applying counterpressure during crowning. Once the head is free of the birth canal, rotate it to account for restitution or external rotation, the sixth cardinal movement of labor. Deliver the rest of the baby. Using hemostats, Clamp the umbilical cord about 2 inches from the baby's body, then place an umbilical clamp between the forceps and the baby's body. Cut the umbilical cord between the two clamps with dissection scissors. The obstetrician should then focus on the third stage of labor by gently facilitating the expulsion of the placenta without exerting any significant pulling force on the umbilical cord. Thereafter, the L&D nurse will dry the baby by gently wiping away excess lubrication gel. Assess the baby's APGAR score at 1 minute postpartum and again at 5 minutes postpartum, as outlined in Appendix 1. If the APGAR score is low, perform a simulated neonatal resuscitation, following the guidelines in Project 5. If the APGAR is acceptable, proceed with a neonatal examination as detailed in Appendix 2. Next, place the baby on the kitchen scale and measure its weight. Use a tape measure to determine its length and head circumference. Enter these measurements, along with other relevant details, on the welcome baby card. 
use a stamp pad to imprint the baby's footprints onto the back of the card. If the baby's name is known, write it on a neonate's ID band along with the mother's name, gender, date of birth, and a medical record number. If the name is not known, write baby boy or baby girl. Thread the ID band through the hole at one end of the umbilical clamp and secure it as shown in the accompanying photo. Finally, wrap the baby in a blanket and place it in the makeshift baby warmer from Project 5.